So I'm at the computer typing, and then I see a notification from ACX that you, um, Grand Mac, um, audition for it. You have a new audition. I was like, okay, let's see what happens. Because I already told God, I'm like, I'm going to go with anyone. So I don't care. And then once you started talking, I was like, oh my gosh. I ran to my coworker's office. I was like, can you listen to this for me? <laughs> I was like, he is so good. And I read your um, your description and with your profile and everything. I was like, he is too good. And then she made me sit in her office to listen to the whole thing that you said. And she was like, what is that the end? Why did he stop? Why did he stop? I was like, should I go with him? I need to go with him. She was like, yes, go with him. And um, I showed it to my mom, I showed it to my, my dad. I was like, he is so good. And honestly, he's the best one out of everyone I have. And I already told God I'm going to go with anyone at this point. But God sent me the right person. And so that's how it came to be. But I was, it was kind of frustrating to get the right person, the, the one that had the right British accent and who knew how to bring it to life. So when you sent it to me, I was like, that's God said. That was really God said. I know you as Elizabeth. This is the first time we've ever communicated this way because it's all been messages through ACX, through via like a text service on ACX up until now. Um, mm -hmm. But your author name is Red Writer. Where does that come from? Um, well, it was around the time I was probably like 17 or 18. And I really wanted an author name and I wanted something really cool. Yeah. Um, but I got inspired by this other author on um, this writing website. Her name was Green Writer. And I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. And I was like, well, my favorite color is red and I'm a writer. So I'm red writer. And I just took that and yeah, I ran with it. <laughs> well, it works. And whereabouts are you? Where are we speaking to you? I am in Charlotte, North Carolina in the United States. Okay, North Carolina. Some friends of mine worked in, I think it was North Carolina. It was one of the Carolinas. They were on a radio <laughs> station. Their name was Gene and Julie, and they were on... Oh, on, wow. On Light. Is it KVIL? Have I got the right name of the station there? Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll they they did a breakfast show, their husband and wife. They, I think they still live there, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think they live in Raleigh, though. Oh, then is, yes, that's North Carolina. Mm -hmm. is, is that f so? It is North Carolina. I got the right state. Yeah, but it's the wrong <laughs> town. How far away is that from you? Um, as in driving distance, that's probably about like an five-hour drive. Oh, it's a long way. Yeah, it is. Oh, you People. wouldn't have been able to listen to them then in the morning. No, <laughs> no. 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 So, what kind of a place is it? I've never been to that part of the United States. I, I think the closest I've probably been is Atlanta. Is that probably? Oh. That's popular. Yeah. yeah. Is it, will it be, will, will it, will the vibe in Atlanta be the same as in Charlotte? Am, am I talking about the same kind of, no? <laughs> no, the vibe in Atlanta is more um, lively. They're more of a party state, um, party place. However, Charlotte has like a small town feel, but they still love to do things, but it's just more of a small town, big city type of stuff. Right. Okay, so you didn't grow up there, though. You're from, you're windswept and interesting. You're from Africa. Yes, I am, yes. I was born in Ghana, but my nationality is Liberia, Liberian. So what's the difference between Ghana and Liberia? Um, Ghana is another country in Africa. It's um, is a West African country, and um, Liberia is also a West African country, but they're, like, not too far away from each other. Right. And now they, they speak the same language and, and, and have a lot of the cultural connections the same? Mm -hmm. I, sure. Um, we do have some of the like same food, but we call it differently. Um, we, there's a lot of cultural differences. Um, we, we both speak English, but however, Ghana has this um, language called tree that is commonly spoken um, amongst them. And if like uh, in the book, you would see like Kofi speaking like a foreign language, something like that's not English. And that's tree he's speaking. It's actually spelled T-W-I, but they call it tree. And Liberians, we have different dialects, but we mainly speak English. Okay. And how old yeah. were you when you moved to the United States? I was seven years old. <laughs> I didn't have much of a choice. You didn't? What was the circumstances? How, how come you moved? 
Um, well, my aunt, um, she came here with her husband before um, most of my family came here. And then she decided to, you know, apply for my dad to come over. And I came with him. And just because there was better opportunities here in America than there were in Africa in terms of education, health care and different stuff like that. So as a seven year old, did you see this as a scary thing or an, as an adventure? I saw it as a scary thing because I had to leave my siblings and my mom for um, that time. And I was crying on the plane. I didn't want to come here. I was like, well, I'll never see them again. I was so panicked. And but eventually I got accustomed to it. It was hard with like the cultural differences. But, you know, I learned and I got used to it. <laughs> and how long till you saw the rest of the family then? My other siblings came in 2009 because I came 2007 with my dad and then my siblings came 2009 and then my mom came 2014. Wow, so that's a, a long time for a little girl growing up with no mom. Right. It's Yeah, it's insane. It took me a while even when she came to like get used to her and like, you know, bond with her because I'm like, I don't really know you, you know, I'm not as close to you as I should have been, you know. But your dad must have been a hell of a guy to, to bring to, 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 to you know, to go to go through right. that, and, you know, to bring up a daughter, you know, single handed like that in a foreign country. Foreign country. Well, um, my auntie helped and my cousin, they yeah. definitely helped him raise me. But he really did, especially with working a lot. He really did his best. He was very hardworking. Yeah. So when you were a kid then growing up, what were you reading? Because I know you read a lot and you loved reading, but what kind of stuff was it? Um, when I first started reading, my love for reading um, started to grow. It was just basically like kid kids' books, um, different things that were in my, my school library or whatever my teacher had. I remember I had this teacher in first grade. Um, I told her, I was like, can you like pack some books for me every day so I can take it home and now I'll read everything and then I'll bring it back and then she would give me another set of books. And I just loved it because I just, reading takes you to a whole different place. And then eventually as I started growing up, I was more into romance and like teen fiction and stuff. And I just thought it was just the cutest thing ever to read a love story or to read things that, um, like teenagers are facing. I love the Sweet Valley High stories, the series. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but that was a teen fiction. I loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not just the dialogue in books. It's the it's finding out what's going on in the characters' minds and everything. Right. They movies. They they try it, but and great actors. You look at them in a movie and you kind of think you know what they're thinking, but in a book you can see word for word exactly what they're thinking. Right, exactly. And, and that's what was one of the things, one of the many things that was so good about your book, Whispers of Judas, you know, because the characters are going through stuff and the, the, it's almost like the characters' internal dialogue when they're doubting decisions they've made, they're doubting people who are very close to them, especially in the case of Sienna, you know, and uh, so, well, let's talk about the, the, the characters of the book then. So you mentioned Kofi earlier. So he's from Guyana and he's a business mogul. So he's, he's a very eligible bachelor, shall we yeah. say. He's a successful <laughs> businessman. Where did his, his character come from? Is he based on anyone you know? No, um, not, not that I know personally. Um, Kofi, he... I wanted to create like an African love story and because I wanted to use both my, cause I'm from Ghana and I'm, my nationality is Liberian. So I wanted to use both of those things. Um, so I developed him as like a character that I, I, I wanted girls to fall in love with when they're reading the book. I wanted them to be like, Oh my gosh, I want a Kofi in my life. I wanted someone that, um, that knew how to, treat a girl right and you know like and i love business and i love business marketing that's something i am majoring in school so i use what i loved and my passion and i really put that in him i just wanted someone that was sweet um someone that was hardworking, and someone that represented a basically a godly man and i really wanted the characters to like relate to him or 
you know, want him, basically, because that's how I used to feel when I read, like, romance <laughs> novels. <laughs> yeah. And and Sienna, is there any of you in Sienna? Oh, um, many people ask me that. They're like, <laughs> who, which character do you relate to more? Um, mm, I would say I relate to Kofi more, but with Sienna, um, I wanted someone that was basically still learning and still trying to understand who she was and how she should be treated. Yeah. And I wanted her to be both very assertive and passionate about what she does and very smart, but at the same time, naive. So, you know, because many people can relate to that because many women, independent women, they know what they want. They they're very ambitious. They do this, that, and the third, but there's some parts of them that they have to understand that they're lacking in. And I wanted Sienna to be that type of person that they're like, okay, so I can look at her life and I can evaluate my life and be like, okay, what is it that I'm missing? And what is it that I need to work on? So can I, would I say there's any part of me in Sienna? Not much. Not okay. Much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But she is, you know, Liberian and, you know, Kofi is Ghana. So, you know, there's, there's, there's elements there from you, yeah. I'm sure, in both characters. But you set the book in London. Why was that? I love the UK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love Europe. And, oh, my gosh, I'm telling you, I want to be I want to be in Italy. I want to live in the UK. I just want to travel around that area and then also a lot of Ghanaians and Africans live in that area. So I thought it would be pretty cool and relatable yeah. um, for them to be stationed in that place. And then plus, if this book was to ever become a movie, the cool British accent, who wouldn't want that? You know, I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's go with that. <laughs> so have you, you've been to London, right? I have not. Oh you've not? Oh, you've got to. When this whole <laughs> pandemic thing's over, you have to come and I'll show you around. I have to. It's crazy. I haven't been there. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd like it. It's a great city. It's got a nice vibe. And the the yes. thing that catches out a lot of people about London, it is a big city with big buildings and stuff, but it's got a lot of old buildings. But mm. there's a lot of green spaces in London. There's a lot of parks, you know, Hyde Park and Regent's oh, Park yeah. are right in the center. It's not like New York where you've just got this one big central park. That's London's true. got, you get off the back streets and there's little squares and in the square there's a little park and, you know, you're in the middle of right. Soho in London, there's Soho Square, you know, and then there's Golden Square just up the road also in Soho. Really. But <laughs> yeah, it's I, I think you'd like it. I hope you let me know when you come over. My wife and I will take you and show you a bit of London if you haven't. Yes. I have to get my passport. I've been telling myself I have to get it this year so I can start moving. Yeah, around. I don't think we're allowed to travel at the moment, though. I know I'm not allowed to go to the United States at the moment. Uh, I don't know how, what it is coming your way. But, yeah, when that's mm -hmm. all over, you should you should let me know. You should definitely, definitely. let me know. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, considering you've never mm -hmm. been to London, it you know, as a, as a narrator of it, it sounded to me like you knew London. So oh, where, wow. where did you pick that? all that up yeah you you know it you mm -hmm. you telling me you'd never been was a big surprise how sure. how did you how did you get into the the feel of it then and the vibe of it it really had to be god because i was trying i um sometimes i would do research of different london slangs or <laughs> certain things that um people in like you know in england are doing i'm i would just try to do little research but i didn't feel like i did enough so I was just trying my best from social media because I follow a lot of um, accounts from UK, from the UK. So I would like read the comments and see what they say, different type of how they think, how they, you know, react and like their settings, like the place and everything. And I'm like, okay, let me try my best to write this down <laughs> and see. But I tried to do research. I didn't think I did very much, but I did. I tried. No, you nailed it. I remember you sent me a note at one stage and said if any of the... If any of the phrases or words are different in the UK to the to to the US, please please feel free to change them. And I did change a couple, but it wasn't many. I think it was just a couple of oh. words, really. I think I changed. I, I I might be wrong, but I think I changed elevator to lift at one stage. But I mm -hmm. I there really weren't that many. You really had it. So <laughs> yeah. So so 
it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a really good book. You mentioned God there. That's an important thing in your life, isn't it? Your faith. Yeah, I love him. <laughs> right, and was was that did that come from growing up in in Ghana, or did that come from the community you grew up in, grew up with, in Charlotte, North Carolina? Um, it was definitely um the community I had here, and that's mainly because well when i was in ghana i was so young i really i mean i went to church with my mom and my parents and stuff but i didn't really have that passion but here i was i was what you would call a church girl every day i'm like church was my favorite is still my favorite place to go um i always follow my my younger my older siblings to like youth practices at the church and different things i always wanted to be involved um so from like being involved in church and with my family and everything, I developed my own relationship with God and reading the Bible for myself and praying and, you know, just hearing from him for myself. Yeah. And the the character that's in the book, the, the pastor, is he based on a, a pastor you've had? Um, definitely that he has some elements of like different pastors and people that came in my life and, you know, encouraged me or did something for me but it wasn't necessarily one narrow um, person that i thought of it was just different elements okay well i don't know how much of the book we want to give away so you're <laughs> gonna to have to tell me where to draw the line here okay. uh, because okay. this is up to you because the it is a romance it is a romance the book it's a it's a love story between two people um but one of them has made quite a significant decision about the way he would like to behave. <laughs> uh, 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 am I saying too much already? Oh no, continue. Okay, so he's he's made a decision. Can I say what it is? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. he's made a decision to be chaste or celibate after having, in his younger years, they were, shall we say, wild. Maybe wild is yes. too, too strong a... Uh, a description but you know he'd he'd lived a bit and he's decided mm -hmm. no no more he's gonna look the next girl's gonna be the one and it's gonna wait till they're married where does that where does that storyline come from um lord um because it, so. it made it made it more than a straight romance you know because mm -hmm. a lot of it is is a typical romance story they have a they have a meeting story in a cafe which i'm not going to give away but they have a meeting story and then they develop their relationship and then they have ups and downs along the way and then we see where it goes and that's you know pretty standard for a romance novel but yours gives it this extra twist and i was just wondering where that came from <laughs> um well that, that just came from the fact that God was the one who inspired the book because I, this was not the first book I've ever started to write. The first book I ever, um, novel I ever attempted to write was in fourth grade and that developed and developed as my relationship with God developed. And um, with that first book, it's called I Can Wait. I haven't published that yet, but the character was basically learning how to um, heal from her past and everything. And for some odd reason, around 2018, um, God gave me the inspiration for Whispers of Judas. Yeah. And I felt like there was something in this world, like there's a lack of self appreciation of self-worth. People um, didn't understand who they were basically in like their identity and everything. So I believe that he gave me the inspiration for this book, not to just, you know, tell a romance story and say, okay, this is a cute romance story. I hope you enjoy it. And this, that, and the third, but he wanted me to basically explain to them that they are worthy to be pursued. They are worthy to um, have a love that they desire and be, you know, waited on. And so with Kofi, being the one that's chased, I wanted to twist the narrative around a bit because we see so many times it's always the girl that's like, oh, I want to wait or I want to do this. They're the one who's keeping themselves. They're the one who has to basically persuade the guy that 
if you want me, then you have to wait with me. But like, I wanted to twist the narrative and tell men that you are also worth the wait. You're also, um, you deserve someone who's willing to be with you for who you are and develop a personal intimate relationship with them before, um, going that far with them. So I wanted something that's different than cultural um, narratives in society. So I was like, you know what? Kofi's going to be the one that wants to wait. And we're going to see how this goes. And yeah. And when you say it came to you from God, mm -hmm. how did it come to you? Did you hear a voice in your head or were there other signs? Oh. How was it? <laughs> Um, so this book came around, this idea for the book came around November of 2018. I was really down. Like, I just felt so terrible. A lot of things was happening at that time. And I remember I was listening to some gospel music to, you know, lift my spirits up. And there's this art artist, um, his name is Limo Blaze. He's an African gospel artist. And his song came on, it's called, um, what you call it? Oh my gosh, I forgot the song, but his song came on. And then I just, I got up, I'm a dancer. So I got up and just started dancing in my room. And then once I closed my eyes, it's like, I saw the book. I saw um, like a movie. I saw the first chapter. I saw Kofi walking into the cafe and see, he mini Sienna and everything. And I remember I was telling God in my head, I'm like, God, this would be such a great movie. And he's like, okay, go write it. But first write it as a book. And then I immediately, I went to my computer and I just started writing the first thing that came to my mind and whatever I saw from that short vision and the first chapter, that's when it just, that's when I started writing the first chapter. Wow. So you yeah. were, you were away then you were away. <laughs> now, as you can see in the, let me, let me see where I'm going there. There, there's, this is the, the picture from, from the book here. Yeah. I've had to crop it down. Otherwise it'll be in the way of us. But uh, where does the where did that picture came from come from? Because you, you've got you, you've got you know the story. You've got the title, obviously, Whispers of Judas, and you've got yeah. Sienna talking to her friend there, or she's whispering to her. You've got Kofi mm -hmm. there. How did you get a picture that so accurately depicts what was going on in the book? Um, originally, when I was talking to my publisher, I didn't know how I really wanted the cover design to be, so I was like something abstract and I give them a little example and the one that they sent me the first proof I was like I sent it to my friends and family they were like this doesn't capture the attention of people especially with what the book is talking about and I'm like well I don't really know what to do so can you guys help me out and my sister um she was like okay we can do a photo shoot so she her friend and I contacted one of i have the book here i contacted one of her friend's brother which is kofi here <laughs> yeah um, yeah so we had a photo shoot and by god's grace um the photographer was so really nice and generous enough to help us out and we took a bunch of different pictures for um you know different proofs and see which one would be good and this was the final decision they wanted to go with this one because they thought it you know exemplified the book it does basically. it does yeah yeah it definitely does and i i work on so many audio books i've done <laughs> i've done quite a few romance books before and i see the the cover picture the guy in particular they use is the same guy so there must be some stock place you can go <laughs> to download you know and that's why i thought yours was unusual because i was like no i've not seen one like this before <laughs> So I thought right. I'd ask you, I'm glad there is a story to it. Mm -hmm. So it's all really in-house and really it's got your touch on it as well. Yeah. Even right down to the cover. <laughs> yeah. You got it there. So how, how many books have you had published now? This is my first one. This is the first one. Yeah. So this is it. And how yeah. is the the paper and the ebook doing? Is it is it getting some traction? Um, The ebook. You know, to be completely honest, I have not been promoting this book as I should. That's why I always tell myself I need a manager because I'm just being <laughs> so, I don't know why, but um, people have bought a lot of the physical copies. I'm oh, not I sure see. The e right. yeah. um, but I have to check the, basically my author, my publisher's website for that. But people have been buying the physical copies. Okay. Maybe it's one of those people like that. So how was the process then? So this is your... At this stage, and I always find, this always blows my mind, 
because I've only been narrating audio books for it's less than two years now. Mm-hmm. And although I've I've got over 70 audio books on sale right now, Audible, right. I've been um, putting them out. But I always I always see it as a kind of a, an awesome responsibility to take somebody's work that they've worked so hard on and written and rewritten and worked out and, you know, asked friends about and everything. For them, all I'm doing is reading it out loud, but I've got to do it justice. And it's always, it's there's always a little bit of fear there when I go into things and I hope they like wow. it. So, so for you, what was the process of turning your book into an audio? Just because there might be some authors watching this that have got books and thinking, I don't know about this audio book thing. I don't know how it works. For you, how was how was the process of turning it from your life's work mm-hmm. into an audio book? Um, well, because <laughs> that was one of the things I wanted to do to help promote the book because I'm like, well, this is something passive that I could do. If I find someone that um, can read it, I can just send them the money and I can be busy working on my actual thing and not have to like promote it all the time. So I was like, that's another way of promoting and doing something for the book. Cause I made a commitment that I will like um, spend like a certain amount of money every paycheck to do something for the book. I mean, I just made that commitment last month, so it's not that much. But um, so with the audio book, I remember before I even published the book, I was doing some research with ACX. Yeah. And I saw that it was pretty simple to make it into an audio book. So once it was published, I was like, OK, let me check it out again. I went back to the ACX um, um, site and everything and. I started doing the process and writing how I would like the narrators to be and what there was different things like that. And I put that certain script because I of a little snippet of chapter six, because I'm like, if they can read chapter six and well, then they can just read this whole book because that chapter is my favorite. And it just really brings that dynamic of their relationship out. So I, I made it like a little snippet from chapter six and I was just waiting for um, someone to narrate it. Like I would have different auditions, but it never really, it didn't really hit me. I was like, um, the accent was fake. The, (laughs) (laughs) they didn't have the the attitude I want. I I even had to go back over the settings and change the tone like I wanted at first. Cause I'm like, maybe I'm asking for this and they're not, you know, maybe I just thought maybe I was asking for too much or I wasn't asking for the right thing. So I would change the different tone and things like that. And I remember I had about maybe five auditions, like sitting down and I told God, I, I was at work and I told God, I said, I need to hurry up and get this thing out, get this audiobook out. And whoever, I'm just going to go over those five auditions and I'm just going to pick them. Cause I really don't, I don't, I, I didn't like them. I was like, I'm not feeling it, but I'm just going to do it. You know, I'm like, at this point, I have to get it over with. So I'm over at the computer. I'm going to do it either on my, on my break or when I get home. So I'm at the computer typing. And then I see a notification from ACX that you, um, Grand Mac, um, audition for it. You have a new audition. I was like, okay, let's see what happens. Because I already told God, I'm like, I'm going to go with anyone. So I don't care. And then once you started talking, I was like, oh my gosh. I ran to my coworker's office. I was like, can you listen to this for me? <laughs> I was like, he is so good. And I read your um, your description and with your profile and everything. I was like, he is too good. And then she made me sit in her office to listen to the whole thing that you said. And she was like, what is that the end? Why did he stop? Why did he stop? I was like, should I go with him? I need to go with him. She was like, yes, go with him. And um, I showed it to my mom, I showed it to my, my dad. I was like, he is so good. And honestly, he's the best one out of everyone I have. And I already told God I was going to go with anyone at this point. But God sent me the right person. And so that's how it came to be. But I was, it was kind of frustrating to get the right person, the, the one that had the right British accent and who knew how to bring it to life. So when you sent it to me, I was like, that's God sent. That was really God sent. Wow. <laughs> Wow, because I, I yeah. saw it there, you know, I because at the moment I only do one audition a day because I got so much work on, I can't, if I do more, because mm-hmm. I usually get, I get, I, I do 
one audition a day and I usually get one book a week I get, which means I have to get a book out in around about a week or, or, or pretty wow. close to it anyway. So I only do one audition a day, so I'm pretty fussy what I pick now. And I saw I, I saw yours there and I thought, well, this is this seems like a really... Because I don't, like I say, I've done romance stories before, but because yours had that extra twist, I thought, <laughs> oh, this this could be really interesting. This isn't just a, a straight romance story. There's a bit of a there's a bit of a twist here. But I have right. to say, when I started getting into it, and I was reading the um, the, uh, the the story and what the story is about, and because because at the at first, you know, the title didn't make sense to me. Whispers of <laughs> Judas. You know, what's right. that all about? You know, it's it's got nothing to do with you know, Kofi trying to be chased and, and all that. It hasn't got that in it. And to me, that's what exactly. made the difference. But then mm -hmm. when I started getting in there, it was almost like another level, you know? <laughs> it was like, okay, so now we've got this. We've got we've got a friend that's an issue. And once again, I don't want to give too much away. Mm -hmm. But it is a good story. I think even if you're not a reader of romance novels usually, I think you'll enjoy this one as a good story. It's a good story. Yeah. Um, and, and I really, and you've really done well with it. So <laughs> I am honored that you, you chose me and, uh, and, and, uh, because I really enjoyed uh, doing the audio book. I always, I always get into the books I do. I know some, uh, I, I'm guessing some people mm -hmm. must just, just read them and forget about them. But no, okay. I go, I go to bed at the end of the day and I'm thinking about things in the story and where it's going to go next and <laughs> what are they going to do and that. And yours, yours was one of those. So well, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Let's <laughs> let's hope you get a lot of success with this and you sell a lot of copies. I'm sure you will, because you've worked so hard on it so far, and yeah. uh, and maybe you'll be giving up that day job. Hopefully, that's what I'm trying. <laughs> but I need to find a balance and actually do something about it. You need to yeah. find what? A balance, a manager. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Red Writer. Or Elizabeth, as I know you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for choosing me as the narrator and the producer for Whispers of Judas. It's a cracking book. It's a great story. If you like romance, you'll love it. If you don't normally read romance, I think you should read this because this is, is a story with a, a few more twists and turns. If you're watching this now on YouTube, if you go to the comments and the, you know, the blurb below, I'll put a link in there which will get you a free copy with a 30-day trial at Audible. So go there now and, and sign up for that. And uh, if you want to know any more, how can we find out more about you, Red Writer? I am on um, Instagram as Red Writer underscore. And yeah. I'm also on Facebook, Red Writer. And then I'm on Twitter, Red Writer 21. Red Writer 21 at Twitter. Okay, so that's the, the easiest way. Hey, yeah. uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to finally meet you and to <laughs> right. talk to you about the cracking book, which is called Whispers of Judas by Red Writer. Thank you so much for having me.